Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about the Aglonema pictum tricolor. I'm very proud of this plant because it's very, very popular and it's endemic here in Indonesia, specifically in the Sumatra and the Nias Island region. So this is a really beautiful Aglonema and I believe this is actually my first Aglonema video in the channel, but this one's popular more in the West. I guess in Europe and the US, it is not as popular here in Indonesia, however, because we have so many selections of aglonemas. There's a culture here for appreciation and cultivation of aglonemas in, across many, many species. But this one is actually very easy to grow. Actually, all aglonemas have relatively the same type of care. So we're gonna go through that. And today I'm gonna be propagating this guy for you in many different methods. Actually, I got this plant as one single plant about, I would say a year and a half ago. It was a very leggy plant, a very mature plant. And then I managed to propagate it and now I have quite a lot of them. And I'm gonna give you the history in a bit. So originally I got one plant, I imagine that with one uh, branch coming up and then it's flowered and it started putting out these pups. So these are, I, I counted four pups that grew from the base and I took the top cutting, I just cut it off, stuck it into soil and this is what I have. I have also, propagated some of the main stem. I just cut like the sections of the stem and ins inserted it into the potting mix. And it's given me two babies over here, which is so cute. They're very, very easy to propagate. Of course, there's many more ways to propagate them, which we'll explore in this video. But I got so many plants out of just one in just a year and a half. And now I'm about to get more. So really quickly about the care, they do like bright indirect light. They can withstand medium indirect light. And some people say they can take low light. Although if you put them in low light, they're gonna grow slower. They probably get very leggy, long internodes and smaller leaves. In terms of watering, they need to dry out completely between watering, at least here in my climate, in my tropical regions. If you give them very dense potting mix that's compacted with water, they will rot easily, they will die. So you need to let them dry out almost completely between water. And these guys, they actually can stand drought. So if you forget to water them for a couple of days, they're gonna be okay. So I give this one terracotta pot and my general purpose potting mix. Of course, another combination that you can use is also the plastic pots and forest floor potting mix. These guys are actually forest floor dwelling in nature, so they will appreciate that kind of airy substrate that has a lot of good airflow in them, but then never allowed to dry out for too long. I fertilize this the same way I do with my other house plants. I go with natural, I go with chemical, I go with slow release, but all very diluted and they do respond quite well to fertilizing. I have never had any pest issues with these guys as with my other aglonemas, they're quite pest resistant. Although some of them do get their leaves chewed up by caterpillars and things like that, but that's another video for another time. So if you have this grown indoors, you're kind of safe from those crazy pests. And these guys actually come in a regular pictum, so it's an aglonema pictum. I'm gonna insert a B-roll of that. But this one here is the tricolor which comes with three different colors. It's like dark green, light green with a little bit of the cream, frosty white variegation on it. And the variegation is very random. I got this plant when the variegation was not so much. And then obviously when you give it more light, usually they come up with more variegation. I've also seen ones that are very, very white and some that are a little bit more green. So definitely light levels play a factor with variegation on these and also a bit of luck, of course. And that's what makes this plant so spectacular is because none, none of them look exactly the same. So these guys do flower, as you can see here. This one actually is really, really in trouble, but I'm not worried about it because I know that there's many nodes from the stems that we can take cuttings from. I think three reasons to fall in love with aglonemas, beautiful foliage, easy to care for, and they propagate like crazy. I'm gonna blow your mind later with some propagation projects. But anyways, back to my ish thing. This guy did flower for me. As you can see, this is the flower. And I think these are the fruits. So they managed to self-pollinate somehow. Or maybe because there's so many of them here and then they all kind of flowered at some point and something pollinated each other. So I managed to harvest some of the fruits. It's like yellow in color, super tiny. I broke it open, I took out some seeds and I managed to put those seeds into some sphagnum moss. So cross my fingers to see if maybe they will germinate. I don't know, I'm not really good at seed starting, but let's see about that one. I'll update you guys later in the video if those seeds do germinate. But as you can see, they actually do self-pollinate very readily and there's so many fruits here, I guess. 
yeah i'm not gonna get into pollination today i hope to get into pollination somewhere in the future because that's so fun especially aeroids they pollinate the same way pretty much by the way i've also seen hybrids of this where this is hybridized with the aglonema rotundum i'm gonna insert a clip on that which is really beautiful because the aglonema rotundum has dark foliage with pink stripes running through the middle of the leaf so yeah the plant looks exactly like the hybrid between this and the rotundum stunning plant and i have a feeling that that plant will become quite dominant in the plant market soon all right so we've moved to our plant studio where we're going to be talking a little bit about the anatomy so when your aglonema flower this is a good sign because it means that the plant has become mature so these are the flowers you can either cut them off to promote uh, bigger and better leaves otherwise it's going to channel all this energy into flower production and of course with flower you can pollinate them or they can stop I just got lucky I think and you can have seeds that way but most of us don't grow these for the seeds so feel free to go ahead and cut off the flower at this point because it's going to drain energy from the plant but the good thing about it is that when it's flowered it means that the plant is old enough and it's going to start sprouting babies from underneath so the anatomy is that each of these, these are actually nodes, they actually would grow, as you can see here, they'll grow one leaf and then one node, one leaf and then one node, one, kind of like a philodendron actually if you think about it. And each node has the potential to give you one full plant and you can do that in a few different ways. I don't know all the ways yet, I'm still figuring it out but I'm going to be experimenting, I'm going to show you some of the conventional ways to do it. So all these old nodes can give me a new plant each however when the plant has reached maturity when it flowers it will automatically branch out from underneath giving you pups from some of these nodes below so that's what happens and with aglonemas if you have a leggy stem like this if you bury it if you put it in a deeper potting mix all these nodes are going to sprout roots and it's going to sprout roots into the potting mix which will do two things one the roots will support a bigger and healthier plant and number two those roots may also activate some of the nodes along um, the node to uh, encourage branching so it's actually recommend for you guys to never let your aglonemas get this leggy this is too much but the good thing about this is that i can actually cut this up into many sections so for example here you can see the growing eye already very interesting. Okay, so let me show you what the babies look like. So this is the stem cutting. As you can see, this is the actual stem that I just stuck in here, kind of vertically down. And it took a very long time. It took about, I don't know, six months to put out this little baby leaf. So that took a while. And the baby leaf doesn't really have that uh, variegation yet, but I'm sure it will when it reaches the mature, maturity. So there's two of them in here. I remember putting three of them. So I guess one of them did not make it. So you can do that. Definitely, you can just cut a main stem and just stick it into potting mix. So today's experiment, I'm going to be very, very generous. So the main purpose of this experiment is to turn as many plants as possible using as many different methods as possible. So let's start with, uh, let's see. I'll start with this one actually, because this is smaller. So while I'm doing that, I need to cut off the flower because since I'm propagating it, I don't want it to spend all this energy on the flower. It's also turning into flower. Okay, so now that I've done that, what you, I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut it super low. Right, let me see, right here. Okay, so let me show you what's happening here. This bump that you see here, that's actually a growing eye. So when you do make a cut like that, the plant will put out a branch here and probably more. I don't know, there's, there's a... I don't know how far this goes in the pot, but this is probably gonna go pretty deep. It's gonna activate a few nodes. So when you cut aglonema, this is what's really amazing about them, is that they really, really do branch out. So that's amazing. But I need to make sure that this is not overwatered because it doesn't have that foliage, so it doesn't need as much water. So I need to keep an eye out for this guy. So I'm gonna leave the pups in here as well. As for this top cutting, you know what I'm gonna do I may actually do water propagation with this one because it's it's got so many leaves. I may actually t take off even like one because when you propagate anything, you don't want too many leaves as the leaves are going to drain energy because you don't have the root to supply energy to the leaves. So I might as well take some off. There you go. Actually, I could cut this. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm so greedy today. See here, that's the good. That's actually the 
the growing eye. I don't know if you see that little point right here. Ta -da! That's the growing eye. So I'm going to cut maybe right above that. There. So then this one I will turn into its own plant. But I'm going to do this. So I have two pots here. One of them actually filled with a little bit of fungicide and pesticide. That's because I bought a prop box, you guys. I bought a container that I'm going to start propping plants in. So it's going to be kept very humid in there. And then I'm not going to open it or water it much at all. Let the humidity do its thing. So I'm going to do that with this one. So I'm going to just put it gently like that. That's it. With the growing eye side up. And then so hopefully something will sprout. I'm going to put a few more cuttings like this here. Some people should do even more aggressively where they cut the, the nodes because there's two, a few nodes in here. But I'm not going to do that for you this time. So for the next one, I'm going to be taking off the top here. Maybe this one. Cut it. Let me see if there's any growing eye here. Yeah, there is a growing eye here. But I took a little bit more than it because I wanted to root in separate notes for this plant. I'm going to take off the flower because I don't need it anymore. The flower is so cute, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> okay, and then I want to take off this fruit as well. So I guess this is fine. This leaf is almost dying anyway, so I might as well take it off. So you don't want to have too many leaves in that. So then what I want to do is this is my forest floor potting mix. I'm just going to stick that in there. You know what, I'm going to stick a few cuttings in here later. You can also use general purpose potting mix, but with forest floor potting mix like this, they can be watered more often because I just hose my plants down daily. So I don't really measure for moisture anymore. This is one that is putting out a new vine here. Very cute. <laughs> so I'm going to take this one again. This one, I'm going to do... Yeah, and sorry actually for some of these, because this is a little bit woodier than the other ones, I am going to use some rooting powder, this one. Let me take off some of the fruits first. And keep in mind, I live in the tropics, so I'm around 80 to 90% humidity outdoors. I don't really need a humidity setup for these. Although these are not plants that require a lot of humidity to thrive so yeah i'm just gonna dip them in, in a little bit of what do you call this <laughs> rooting hormone usually with woodier stem it's re recommended to use the rooting hormone because the woodier stems would do roots slower and they can rot very easily because of the woody nature so i'm just gonna stick that in here i think two is enough in this pot i'm just gonna uh, leave it alone. I'm not going to fertilize it yet. There is some worm casting here for nutrient, but I may do some uh, furodon, some pesticide in here, just to keep pests at bay and some antifungal because there's quite a lot of fungus issues in my area these days. I'm just going to sprinkle that on the top of the soil and whenever I water it, it's just going to leach into the soil. Here's furodon, a very controversial pesticide. So that's done. Let me actually take this out of the pot to see the roots. Yeah, it's not that root bound yet. Oh, yet. Oh my god, so sorry about that. I dropped the, cam the camera or my phone rather. So I did take this out of this pot and it's fine. It's not root bound at all. I don't think they need a lot of root space, in fact. So it's doing quite okay. Take out some of the dead leaves. Something fell off. Yeah, this thing fell right off. One of the branches are actually, yeah, getting old. So I may propagate this. Although this is a little bit old, I'm not sure if this will take. Yeah, it's a little bit mushy. Very mushy. Hang on. Yeah, now this is fresh tissue. So this is fine. The top cuttings were mushy before. So this is a knob here that may grow in, what do you call this? in our situation here like I'm just gonna leave it like that see what happens so I'm gonna uh, go ahead and leave this in this pot because what happens is that when I cut these off they're going to sorry let me move back there they're going to branch out quite a bit take that this much and I'm gonna cut sections whenever I see a growing eye I'm gonna cut it because I'm pretty sure it will root 
uh, grow there. I'm gonna put that here as well. You don't want to bury it too deep, it will rot it if you bury it too deep. It just needs to find a comfortable bed to lie on. Yeah, this one's got one eye. This is actually a pretty long node. As you can see this ring here, so I don't know if anything will sprout from below that. But I'm gonna keep it like this for now. And for this one, I'm actually going to insert it kind of slanted because I knew that there's no node below. So part of it is in the potting mix. And this potting mix is actually a little bit humid now. I, I don't really need to water it later. I'm gonna take that. This one I'm gonna take as well. Hang on, let me show you. So this is trying to sprout a new bud already by itself. So very interesting. Okay, I think this is quite full. I'm gonna move on with the other one. So this one I'm not going to use the prop box. So we're gonna do an experiment to see how they do. I'm gonna just leave this one outdoors and let the rain take care of it. I'm gonna water it lightly pretty much every day. Right here. So I'm gonna take the top cutting here. And stick that in. And then let me look out here for nodes. Yeah, I see one here. This is a node. That's a growing eye. Just plant it. No, I don't want to plant it too deep again with the with the eye side up. I may have to keep this away from the rain actually because the rain tends to move things around, slosh things around and <laughs> knock plants away. There's a growing eye here. I'm, yeah, I'm doing single node. This is my first time doing single nodes for Aglonema. So yeah, leave that there. More single nodes. I'm very greedy today. Oh my goodness. Okay, I don't know why it's raining suddenly. Oh my God, it's sunny, but it's raining. So I decided to get another pot and this one is forest floor potting mix, which is very different from this one. This is general purpose potting mix. I just wanted to see how they do. So I'm gonna chop this off. Oh my gosh, this rain. Oh my. Yeah, I gotta hurry up, hurry it up. I'm gonna take, how much do I wanna take? Take that. All right, so we are done. We've got one parent plant with two babies that are cut off. So let's hope this will sprout. We've got this one with a lot of stumps here, but this should do quite well. And then we've got this in forest floor potting mix with a lot of stumps. We've got two top cuttings in forest floor potting mix. We've got a lot of stumps in general purpose potting mix. And this one's also in general, but then this one is going into a prop box, which I will show you next time. And then this one is going into water. So I will give you guys an update in a few months time to show you how they're doing. Bye. Welcome to a seven weeks update. And I haven't opened this box in two uh, days. I was gonna say weeks, two days. But I do have this prop box here. Look at all this humidity. And let's see what it looks like inside. Come on, open. <laughs> there. Look at that, that's really disgusting. Look at the algae in here. So, uh, the, this is our plant. I don't know, somehow there are some alocasias that were growing in there. I guess it was in the potting mix. <laughs> and I guess they really love that humidity, which is why they're sprouting. But this is our aglonemas. Look at the buds here. And that one's putting out a, a, a little sprout there. And that one too, I don't know if you can see. Uh, they are doing quite well. Everybody is alive, nothing's rotted. But I don't like this setup at all. It gives me so much anxiety. This one, let me pull it out and carefully. Yeah, look at that. That's put out a new uh, vine here. So all of these shoots will become a whole new plant if you give it a lot of time. So yeah, look at that. It's doing well. This one may be facing down. Hang on, let me, let me pick it up. Yeah, it's facing down. Look at the, the growth here. So let me help help it along let me move it so it's facing up <laughs> there you go much nicer so let me look at let me show you the other cuttings all right so this is everybody so let's look at the wet stick first because we wanted to compare the wet stick from the ones that we propagated in the humidity setup that we did that we showed you earlier before everybody's growing here look at the buds so, so this is how echonemas are, are made uh, See that? 
that's going to be a whole new plant. So from here I can deduce that the ones that were grown in humidity did grow faster, they sprouted more uh, at a faster speed. But these guys, I don't know, they bring me less anxiety because I walk by them every day and I can see if they've rotted and things like that. So whichever method that you choose, I guess it's up to you. It's not that much of a difference in my opinion. It's not a matter of life or death. And here are some of the top cuttings that we just stuck straight into soil. This is doing really well, really well. And then this here is doing quite all right as well. Look at that new shoot. Yeah, there are a lot of new shoots everywhere. This one may be uh, either facing down or dormant. Hang on, let me pick it up. Nope, this is not sprouted yet. <laughs> but this top cutting has put out a new leaf already, so it is doing quite well. Let me see if I can tug it. Yeah, see that? It's rooted into the potting mix. So yeah, this will just take its own time to grow. Take your time, you guys, no hurry. <laughs> and then there's this one here. Uh, that are doing quite well. Look at this one. It's putting out new leaves. This one is putting out leaves. And this one, this one doesn't have any variegation yet. I guess when they're young, they start out all green like this and then they become like that. So yeah, this is gonna uh, do so well. And then this one right here is the parent plant for which everybody came from. Sprouting new leaves everywhere. So Look at that, these are all activated new growth there. So this will branch out, I, I'm gonna predict this, look at this, how cute is that? I'm gonna predict that this is gonna give me about 12 vines, so it's gonna give me a massive plant with 12 sets of plants. And I do need to upsize the pot and fertilize heavily after uh, more of them have sprouted. And this has given me three, I mean four shoots here. A lot. I remember that I started out with one plant about, I don't know, I can't remember, 16 or 17 months ago. And look at how many plants I have now. And look at that. I have probably 50, if I'm counting conservatively, I have about 50 plants. But it just takes a, a little bit of time uh, for them to get to a, a sellable size, to a presentable size. It'll take probably another three months, I would say. So yeah, be patient. Aglonemas are really, really amazing. Imagine all these varieties of aglonemas that we have out there. They're all very easy to propagate. They're all beautiful and easy to care for. Just remember, do not overwater them and do not put them in low light. A lot of people say that aglonemas are low light plants, but they're not. They, they love, love bright light. And some of them can even take full sun if you train them to. So yeah, let me quickly show you the last thing, which is the water propagation. All right, so here's our water propagation and it's lost a leaf here, which is normal, but it's putting out a new one and it's got a little bit of roots, but not a lot. So what I can tell from this experiment is that these guys, they really just do better in, in soil propagation. They're so much faster and so much easier. Of course, it depends on your experience and your confidence in soil propagation because it's a game of keeping the soil not too completely dry for too long, but not soggy wet at all. Look at how uh, dirty the water is. That's okay, do not change the water often. They do like a little bit of that rooting hormone that they naturally put out. So if you keep changing the water often, they're gonna have to keep working hard to put out that hormone, you guys. So here's a three weeks update. I thought I had more pots, but I don't know where they went. I just moved, so this is the new nursery, and everything's messy. We did throw away some empty pots, so hopefully we didn't throw some of these babies away. Uh, but three weeks really isn't a lot, but I really want to close off this video, so I'm just going to give you one final update before I let you go. There are still a lot of growth points here. This is the parent plant with a lot of the main stems. So they are taking their time, but everybody's alive and doing well. I should technically bury this a little bit deeper so that all these roots can turn into more roots. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it as it is for now though because I've got so much to do that this is looking beautiful. I really like big pots of aglonemas where it's like really bushy, a lot of bushes in there. And I haven't really seen many people grow this plant out to be that way, but they do grow that way in nature. And this is the one that was two top cuttings, they're still doing well. This leaf is just coming out 
and then these guys are all putting out um, growth points or at least their growth points are grow and are developing pretty well so that's nice i don't see any mushy or rot stem so i can almost say that this is 100 percent or at least if you want to be conservative i can say it's 90 percent successful so yeah this is how you propagate many aglonemas other than seed of course which is how they are hybridized here's that original parent plant uh, remember where we cut this off over here this is the main stalk and it's put out a few branches two to be exact right here and they're putting out really beautiful leaves look at that and this is really pretty too and then on the side these little ones i remember that they didn't have any coloring on them before because they were so young they're starting to put out these beautiful white on the leaves very cute baby leaves so yeah i guess that's all i have for you today thank you so much for watching i'm at botanist on instagram if you want to dm me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations i'll try my best to get back to you meanwhile do take care and stay safe i will see you in the next video bye